that big pine is very close to our driveway. Let me get a peek at it here. This one right here. It's right off the edge of our driveway. Now I've got to drop it in a very specific spot in order to not damage the plants, the yard, and the house. I'm usually pretty good at dropping trees, but the stakes are kind of high on this one. I think I can do it. I think you'll be just fine. I've seen you drop many trees and they always seem to go exactly where you want them to. Well, these little stakes, wedges, are gonna be extra insurance for that. I'm gonna make a very specific cut and then I'm gonna to try to wedge it over to get it to go where I want it to go. Yeah, we're taking it down because we've been nervous about these storms coming up. We don't want them falling down on our cars. Yes. We kind of... Yeah. Just gonna wedge it over. All right. When you wedge it over, it's a little different than when you straight drop a tree. When you drop a tree, you cut a chunk out of one side and you cut into the backside until it just gets too thin and starts to fall over. When you wedge it over, you really want to leave enough meat in the hinge in the middle for the tree to stand. And then you just start smacking those wedges in on the one side and leaning it and leaning it so that by the time it finally goes, it's got a really solid lean in the direction you're telling it to go. That gives you a lot more control. You can kind of see how it's leaning and adjust your wedges and, and just sort of drive it down till it's at a point of commitment before it finally lets loose. So that's what we're gonna try to do. You do ready you wanna, to get this over with? You wanna stand right here. And look, if you look right at that big pine, mm -hmm. Just to this side is that hardwood, mm -hmm. which is almost wrapped around it up yeah, there. Yeah, I see that. What I don't want is for it to just barely start leaning and for that little bitty tree to catch it. Mm -hmm. And then we'll have a hung tree, which is not good. Not good. Then we've got this one to the side. Basically, I'm trying to drop it right between those two trees. Mm -hmm. It's going to hit this one and bash some branches. It's probably going to hit that big pine. Um, it's going to be messy. All right. But I believe this is the least messy option. So if we drop it like that, it should land with the tip of it pretty much right on that trailer. Right on that junk? Right on that <laughs> junk. Well, hopefully it doesn't break the trailer. If I'm, no, the trailer will be fine. It might bust some holes in that old refrigerator, which is fine. I didn't feel like moving the trailer. It gives me sort of a target to aim for. Okay. Big tree too. Yes, it is. Oh, I see the all the woodpecker mm -hmm. damage. Look at that. Getting at all those little pine beetles that were in there. Mm-hmm. stand back here so I don't get squashed. <laughs> it smells really good. Yeah, I can smell it from here. Nice pine smell. Starting to go.
worse. <sighs> How to get a tree out of a tree. Guess I could just drop the next one and the next one. Yeah, you could drop that pine. No. <laughs> Boy, that just went smack right into it, didn't it? Mm-hmm. Alright, well, this will be doing a little bit of Google searching. get a tree out of a tree. I don't know, but it looks pretty dang stuck. Yeah. I think. Well, I don't know. We'll go figure it out. At least I know it's not going to fall on the house so I can like, take a break. <laughs> <laughs> I found this on the driveway. Yeah. This happens to Jen all the time. This was tucked in her window. What would it take to buy this? Please call me, <laughs> Harold. And then there's this phone number. Yeah. Or is it? Or is it? Please call me, Harold. <laughs> I don't know. She'll never sell, guys. No. Nope. Just give up. It's my baby. That's her baby. And the tree was down. <laughs> Jen had to go do some shopping. And we had some weather coming in, and I got impatient looking at that tree all hung up in there. So I did a little bit of a little bit of shimmying <laughs> on the trunk. I'll show you how I got it down. Well, here's the side of the wreckage. I did two things wrong that. I wouldn't say led to catastrophe, but they definitely led to some scary setups that I didn't need to have to deal with. For one, that front little watermelon wedge that I cut out, I didn't go far enough. Initially, you could see my initial marks. I only went about a third of the way into the tree, which you can do in situations where you don't care which way it's gonna fall. In this situation, I should have gone deeply into the tree till it was just hanging over that cut in the direction I wanted it to go. But I was scared of getting my saw pinched. I was scared of, you know, just going too far. So I erred on the side of caution and it actually created a dangerous situation where the tree had a little bit of lean that I didn't know or didn't, couldn't tell from the height of it. And it was, it was leaning back and basically supported by those wedges until I finally wedged it over. So that was number one. The tree almost wanted to fall backwards. For number two, I was scared of hitting the yard. So I tried to get as close to these trees as I possibly could and, well, I did. <laughs> you, you can see how close I got. That's the big tall pine that it got hung up in and it had barely begun to fall at that point. So <clears throat> once it was fully stuck, I had to cut this stump off flat and use the chains and a wedge and just a lot of whacking and finally got the, the trunk to slide off of the stump, mm -hmm. which jostled it enough that uh -huh. the, the top finally came down. So I created two dangerous situations by trying to play it safe. I learned a lot on this drop, and uh, it's, honestly, it's the it's the most high stakes, scary tree felling that I've well, attempted. Well, yeah, because it's right next to the house. It's right next to the <laughs> house, but I'm glad I did it because this tree's been dead for over a year now, and we'll come back to the front and I'll show you. So as you can see from the way it, it broke apart when it landed, there's I think there's another break right close to you. Yeah, I see that right here. So this tree was really well rotted by this point in the game. 
and we've got some winter storms coming in and I didn't want this to land on our cars. The winds generally blow that way. It would have made our beautiful cars into a pair of hot dog buns on the driveway. Yeah, we don't want that. But if you'll remember back at the beginning, I said, I'm aiming for that trailer. Check it out. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect landing. <laughs> Two really dangerous screw ups. Can you call it skill? Can you call it luck? We'll call it skill. <laughs> we'll call it skill. But hey, it all worked and all's well that ends well. Yeah, and you're gonna take down these other few trees that it got kind of damaged. I, and... was, I was wondering, I kind of suspected I'd have to drop those, but I was gonna see if I could just land this in between, but as you see, I ended up creating a war zone instead. It's fine. I'm gonna so, put a willow tree, I think, right here. Yep, yep. We made a hole in the canopy, so we'll put a nice big willow tree right there. Jen's been wanting a willow for quite some time. So I've got some cleanup work to do. I'm yeah. a, it's not raining very hard. For late December, a nice warm rainy day, I mean, I'm not gonna complain. So I'll be out here clearing the debris and also making more debris, dropping all that stuff. And a lot of chopping, a lot of bucking. Sounds that's, fun. that's gonna be my weekend, I think. But we got the hazard safely removed and I didn't even destroy the house. <laughs> I'm happy about that. Or my plants. Or the plants, Yeah, yes. I've got some uh, snowball bushes and hydrangeas right here. They're babies, but... I'm gonna go in and do, uh, do some video editing. And I think that's all for today. And we'll see you next time. <laughs>